Incarcerated individual at Clark County Detention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this free call, press 2. If you would thank you for using Securus, you may start the conversation now. All right, Chili, we're live, man. Hold, hold on a second. Let me set let me set up my microphone so we can hear you. Okay, go ahead, Chill. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing out there in the free world? What's going on out there in the land of the unfree America? I guess uh, I'm kind of the embodiment of that right now, aren't I? So um, thanks, Brian, for setting this up. And you know, before we get going, I just I wanted to give a, a deep and warm thanks to my friend Brian, who without him I wouldn't have a voice and I wouldn't have an outlet and he's done such an amazing job of fundraising and y'all have put in your hard earned money and I, I just want to say thank you and I, I won't stop and I want to say thank you to Brian specifically for doing what he's done and there's, there's so many other people who have been helping me behind the scenes that I'm not going to say their names out loud but thank you to all of you and I, I wish I could call each and every one of you I wish I could pick up the phone Say hey, thank you so much for supporting me and staying with me. Because uh, this is literally the hardest thing that I've ever been through. Um, the dungeon system here in Nevada is the, the place that I'm at is a, a minimum security prison, a minimum security dungeon where you there's you know I've, I've kind of laid it out in a couple of videos on on in talking with the editor and. It's just this big room where there's just beds. Not so much that the guards are mean. It's just like a, just kind of like a school schoolyard bully who will, you know, tell you to shut up. And you have to shut up because if you don't shut up, you will be sent over to your bunk, which is a metal sheet. And then there's like a one inch thin, like it's, it's such a tattered. You call a mattress, but it's not a mattress. I, I wrote about it. I'll have a ebook coming out when I get out of here because there's just so much information to share. But then you have to go to your bunk and lay on this sheet of metal, and you have to stay there. I have to stay on the sheet of metal at least 18 hours a day. There's a registered or scheduled eight hours of free time every day, which includes sitting on a cafeteria table or taking a shower or going out into this they call a rec yard. But I stay on my bed. I, I stay on my bed 22, 23 hours a day. I only leave that bed to take a shower, and brush my teeth, and, and eat the cloth that they serve. And it, it, it takes cloth. It, it's the lowest form of food you could possibly put to a human being. It literally, they give you bologna. Like bologna. There's a little slab of bologna some, more, some days. And then in the morning, they'll give you a you wake up three o'clock in the morning. You're done with breakfast by, by four at the latest. But the breakfast is late. Breakfast consists of a glob of peanut butter, cornflakes, and a packet of jelly and a few pieces of white bread. And as you know, I have to get my blood pressure down, so I don't eat that white bread and I don't eat that jelly. So I just glob of peanut butter and I don't eat those flakes. And I would recommend anybody else that their flakes are just garbage. So then. After that, you got to go back to your bunk and you stay there until 8 o'clock in the morning. And then from 8 till 9 or 10 or 11, depending on if you get locked down or not, locked down again, you have to go back to your bunk and get sit on the bunk. And then 8 to 11, you'll have free time. And then they'll serve lunch at about 11. And you're locked down again from 11 till noon or I think it's 10 a.m. We have lunch. And then you're locked down from, from 10 o'clock until noon and then you're free from noon until three o'clock, which is how I was able to make this phone call now. And now at any time you can get in trouble and get locked down. Now I can just do anything. Just absolutely anything. For example, there's four aisles here. If you walk down an aisle that your bunk is not on, you'll be locked down for twenty four hours. That's where you cannot leave your bunk for twenty four hours. And then there's a lot of personalities in here. So Someone might say you're looking at them. It's the most ridiculous. 
So then you're free till three or supposed to be free. I can be on the phone, at the cafeteria table, or on my bunk that's free time or in the shower. And so then I'll be, I'll be locked down again in exactly one hour, if not sooner. And then I'll be back on my bunk from three until seven o'clock. So dinner at seven o'clock and then you're free again from 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. or 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. That's what my days are like. I'm kind of what I'm living day in and day out. So for the, for the past three or four days, I've just been downloading to the editor how I think and what I think, just sharing with you guys my thought processes and and how I see the world and how I see the world. And now more than ever, these petty squabbles between people who are on the side of transparency and liberty, they must be squashed. We, we must unite in some way, some level. Egos have to drop and friendships and alliances must be formed, or we will be divided, conquered. And I will be appealing to this obstruction, conviction, and the resisting conviction. Because if I don't, the next time they arrest me, then they'll try to put me in jail for a very long time. I have an appeals, I have an appeals hearing on Monday morning in Las Vegas, and I I know that I, I mentioned last time that maybe some of you guys should come. I think that this time we should pack that courtroom. I have free chili t-shirts up on the website in the next two moments, but really they may not be done in time to wear them to the hearing. So you could just get a t-shirt from Walmart for $3 and write free chili on it and come to the hearing. If you're in the Las Vegas, Nevada area, if you're in Southern California and you can make the drive, then I'm asking. We have to show the judge that I'm not just a leader online. I'm a leader in real life. And a leader in real life has people show up. They just show up. We need to pack that courtroom full of people that, that all are united with the same message that the tyrannical sentencing and the wrongful arrest should not go unnoticed by real people who show up. They know free him. And I'm, I'm going to keep it together during this talk because I have to, but I'm, I'm, I have not been dishonest. I have cried a thousand tears. I have spent many days and nights awake, just sitting there with my eyes open, thinking about how this kind of hearing, how this kind of injustice could happen to me, and what, what my responsibility and it is, and I've already owned that. And I'm wise and I'm talking to so many of you now, I'll own it again. I have told you all, I have lectured you all, that when you go to court, you have to sit up straight, yes sir, no sir, yes your honor, no your honor, and I did not do that. So I take full responsibility for my flight, for my disregard of what the system is. Now, you shouldn't have to do those things, but you do. And because I didn't do them, and I gave that the wife of the cop, the, the judge, her last name, Zimmerman, is exactly that of her husband, Lieutenant Zimmerman from Las Vegas Metro Police Department. So she is the wife of a cop, meaning that while we on this team, DLC, despise cops or strongly dislike them or don't respect them, she sleeps with them and marries them. And she has weddings with wedding parties with hundreds of cops, and she thinks these are the greatest guys in the world. So when I asked this call is being terminated by the facility. Oh boy, that's not good. I've had five or six conversations with Chili since he's been in, and it never terminates like that. It always says you have a minute left. So that wasn't good. Um hmm. Oh, it's because he was talking about Zimmerman. Oh man. I wonder if he'll get in trouble for that. Uh, what I was showing you here in the background, this is the inside of the Clark County detention facility. Uh, there was also this one that's got 19 million views. It's uh, top five moments from Clark County jail. It's kind of weird because it seems like a reality show type deal, but you can kind of see the bunk set up. I don't, I don't like these reality shows. It's like when there's a camera present, nobody's going to be acting natural or normal. Yeah, they did not like that at all. I, I totally agree. Has anybody ever been to the Clark County 
correctional facility. I need to actually be careful what I play here because there was this fight at the Clark County Detention Center. But you can kind of see the setup. Let's see. It had a wide angle shot, right? Right here. Yeah, that's kind of what that's kind of what this part of the mess hall looks like. Wow. I wonder if he's gonna get in trouble for what he said about I don't know. I was I was trying to listen to what he was saying and I was also trying to scan the comments, so I kind of missed some of that. But if there was anything derogatory against a judge, and he did say her name, so there's probably some kind of algorithm that they have connected to the phone lines that shut him down on that. God, that makes me cringe because I'm thinking, okay, what what kind of punishment can 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 there be? I, I'm not familiar with this. Can there be extra punishment that be, can be given to an inmate for saying something over the phone? Maybe he maybe he loses his phone privileges or something. I don't know. But in five, probably six, five or six conversations that I've had with Chile, it always says you have one minute remaining for this call, and it gives you a, a one minute warning. Never does it terminate. It hasn't terminated like that. When you use social media, you got to be super careful about what you say and make sure that it can't be construed as making a threat. And you don't want to make a threat anyway. Thanks a lot, Jay. I appreciate it. Yes, he will have no phone for a bit. Yeah, the, gosh. See, that kind of sucks because we need to find out when this when this appeal is going to go through. And we're not going to get the inside on it if he can only communicate, unless somebody's communicating directly with his appeals lawyer, which I need I need some information on that so that I can do some research and find out if I can get a hold of the guy so I can get some updates through him. Because if Chile loses his phone privileges on this, we're not going to get any updates on that end. I don't think he's going to be calling back, guys. I don't think he's going to be calling back. Hopefully he can get out in the next couple of days. We should send them thousands of letters. Somebody said, yeah, they listen to everything. They tell you before they, before the call goes, they're like, everything that you say is being recorded. Do you sure you want to accept this? Yeah. Okay. I will. High profile case. They probably had a human listening. No free speech from jail. There could have been a human listening. Hmm. And then if the human was listening and he didn't cut off the phone, then he would get in trouble and possibly get, you know, right up in his file. So who knows? He didn't threaten the judge. Chile has a target on his back by law enforcement pigs. No, no, no. I'm not saying that he threatened anybody. If I said that, I apologize. I, I don't realize I, I didn't realize I said that. If I said that, I'm just saying he said the Z word. He said Zimmerman. He said Ann Zimmerman, the judge married to a cop. So I, they probably don't want you talking about there's, there's probably keywords that they put into phone calls that automatically disables the phone call, or they tell the human that's listening. Hey, if they mention anything about the judge, the prosecuting attorney or whatever, terminate the call ASAP. I'm just guessing, man, I'm spitballing. I don't know about any of this stuff. This is all new to me. If you want to support Chile, there's the link. I just put it in there under delete laws. And if you want to support him, because he is going to need some support and also whatever money is not used by Chile, Chile is going to use for Hendry or Flex Your Freedoms or Press with Ranker or anybody who needs help that has a case that video evidence shows they're innocent for. Okay. So just know if we go over the amount and where are we at now? 610, 18,610. And this one's got 13,028. It's got 13, 138. So we're at about, what are we at? About 31, $32,000. Anything that goes over what Chile needs, Chile is going to use for other people who need help. So I, I saw people going, yeah, what well, Chile is going to ask for a hundred thousand dollars pretty soon. Hey, ask for a million, uh, you know, have people support with 2 million, 10 million. Let's get a, let's get a slush fund to combat tyranny until we can figure out, Hey, how do we get us get ourselves in a situation where we're not a dog chasing our tail and throwing all this money into the court system and legal fees and all that kind of stuff? How can we detach ourselves from the system? In the meantime, you know, money talks and money is a great way to get somebody out of jail so they can actually work on their case and, you know, find a good lawyer. So there's the there's the link again. And it doesn't matter which one you give to. They're both going to go, you know, pretty much to the same place. There's this lawyer's fund for activists and there's this fundraiser specifically for Chile and you know whatever Chile doesn't use 
definitely is going to go to other people. And I will be talking to Hendry, if not tonight, I'll be talking to him tomorrow about his experience and what we can do uh, to help him. Flex your freedoms, should be getting out of jail in about eight or nine days. I can't remember exactly. No, he went in on Monday. So Flex your freedoms has been in jail for three days, which means he has seven more days left. I'll be talking with Flex when he gets out. I'll be talking to Henry today or tomorrow. So stay tuned on my channel. Here's the deal. And, um, you know, whatever support you can give to these people in whatever way, whether it's going to their YouTube channel and binge watching some of their videos so that we can keep their, their views up so that their channel doesn't die while they're in jail. Erica Hendry's girlfriend is somebody who needs help. And, uh, you know, these people are in jail for committing no crime. They're in jail because they dared to stand on their God-given, unalienable, constitutional Bill of Rights rights. And the tyrants didn't recognize those rights. The tyrants go, you know what? Yeah, stand on your right, whatever. It's, you, made the, you made the cop scared, okay? Officer safety trumps individual rights. We're putting you into jail. That's what this all boils down to. It's the good old boys club. You and I ain't in it. The link's in the chat room again. Remember, the price of freedom is now and will always be eternal vigilance. And indifference to this notion is the means by which the people have and will secure their own oppression. Freedom is dangerous, but the only thing more dangerous is not having freedom. And if we don't fight tyranny, that's the dystopian world we're headed toward. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.